I'm recording. And that way I can put um, a link to this recording on Moodle so that you could go back and watch this if you uh, desire. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get started with our drawing. Now, what I want you to know is that when we're doing these drawings, um, this is contour, right? So we're dealing with the outer edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over from the edge of, of the picture plane. Um, and I know I just taped this up, but I'm gonna move it because I want you to see that the edge of this chair right here comes in from the edge of the picture plane about, if I take my fingers and measure, hold on, one, two, three, four, one fourth of the way, okay? So using proportional uh, things like this is gonna be helpful for you to understand uh, how far in to come from an edge to place a line. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna come in about one fourth of the way. I'm gonna put a little dot right there. And I'm gonna be coming down about uh, one fourth of the way here. So this line is gonna be not straight. It's got a slight angle to it. And then I'm going to come over here and put, and I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit closer so you guys can see it better. There we go. I'm gonna put a diagonal line that is going to be the leg of the chair that's on the floor. And that's gonna go past this edge and we want these to touch. That's gonna to go past that right about there. So again, I'll bring this over so you can see it. I drew this edge and then I'm drawing the top edge of this, but I'm bringing it all the way over to here. And then I'm gonna draw the diagonals, which is the rest of the chair. All right, so again, if you wanna just watch me draw and then do this uh, later, or if you um, just want through watching to give you the sense or the, the confidence to go in and do this on your image. Um, so now I'm bringing down uh, the side of the chair that is tilted. I'm gonna put another line right next to it. And then we have the blanket is gonna start coming down about right here. And this is gonna go up. And then we're gonna have another line that comes in one of the creases of the folds. All right. Now I'm going to finish off by putting another diagonal right here. And now I'm gonna put these little rungs that are in the back of the chair. So before I do that, I need to bring a diagonal like this and like that. And now I can add three small rungs or pieces of wood that uh, create the back of the chair. So there's one, there's two, and there's three, and they're all different sizes. So let me bring this really close so you can see. Uh, this one goes down a little bit further because I made this at an angle. This one is the middle size, and then this one's the shortest one of all. Underneath that, we have another piece of wood that disappears at this line because it goes underneath. So this is like the base of the chair where you sit on. And then there is a line that goes right here, disappears. And then we have a small edge here that shows the other side of uh, the back of the chair. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit so you can see what I got going on. Let's bring another line. This is the lower edge of that chair that's on the ground. It's leg, the lower edge of that leg. Uh, now I think we can also bring in the leg that's closest to us. So this leg goes all the way off the paper. This one comes down a little bit and it comes in about here. So we see the bottom of it, kind of a little curve. Then we have the lines start to go towards the blanket and it's gonna go past that. And right where I'm stopping is where another 
edge comes in on a diagonal and then we can bring more of the blanket to that and then have it go behind that leg. Now there is another uh, fold over here that comes down and it stops. So the blanket it creates a very interesting uh, part of our design because it has these folds. So, and we're just doing this in line. This is not a value study. So we have to interpret some of the things that look like values uh, like in drapery. So see these shadows that are forming? I have to turn those into lines. So you're looking at those folds and you're interpreting them with line only. And that's not always easy in the beginning, okay? By the way, the drawing that I'm doing right now and the speed that I'm doing it at is different than what I want you guys to do. So I want you guys to spend three to four hours on this. So don't speed through it like I'm doing. I'm doing this quickly for the demo. All right, I'm gonna bring the bottom edge of this chair towards here. And I'm gonna end where I had this line end. So I'm gonna come all the way to about here. Now what's cool is, you know that cord from the lamp, it comes from under the blanket to here, and then it comes down across the leg like that. And it's gonna come all the way down to uh, this point over here. So I'm gonna bring that cord over and then it's gonna go off the page. Just by me putting in this cord like this is really going to help me develop the lower part of my drawing. Because now that I have that cord in there, I can um, go over to the corner of the chair and I can come underneath this and carry that leg to where it ends right there. And it does have a little bit of a curve and then it comes down and we finish off this side. And then we're gonna bring two lines to represent the front edge of the seat of the chair. And it extends out past the leg right there. And then by the cord, we have two small lines for this piece of wood, the underside of it. Now we're gonna bring that down to, let's see, where does it curve? It comes down to about here. So we're gonna go on the other side of the cord and bring those to here. And then we're going to extend the, the leg that's laying on the floor that we don't see most of it, we just see a part of it. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. And then there's one line here that's gonna go under the cord and then continue up this way. Now, let me just stop for a second and show you guys something. When I'm doing this, and this is all freehand, right? And we're using marker. Um, you're gonna take your time. You're gonna spend three to four hours. You might do this in small increments, maybe work on it for an hour, step away, come back and then reevaluate. But to get the placement like even just this far, you know, the way I'm doing it and the speed that I'm doing it, it's because of my experience in doing a lot of these types of drawings. So I'm making it look easy. But in essence, when you do it, you may find that you wanna start over because you're gonna look at something and go, oh, wait a minute this leg of this chair and this leg of this chair, notice I have them if I put my pencil next to these, they're all going in the same direction. If you're not paying attention, and even if you just made this leg go down a little bit like this and not following the lines that you have up here. So in other words, if I hold my pencil next to that and bring it down, I can get the same alignment to match. If you're not careful in being thoughtful about that and yours is off a little bit, 
it's going to change the way you feel about your end result. So you want to be mindful and thoughtful about those things as you're going. So be consciously taking your pencil and holding it up to the still life. Now, I don't have the still life here, so I'm going to have to do it to the photo. But I can hold my pencil next to that angle of that leg, and then I can transfer that angle to my paper. Do you see? So you can transfer a angles. You can hold it up to get something and then move your pencil over to your paper and then say, okay, that's the angle I want. Angles are transferable. So definitely use your pencil as a way to measure some of those things and check angles. I'm putting in this leg over here and one more line, there we go. And then that leg disappears behind this big leg. All right, uh, I have one more leg on the chair that's tilted that's coming down from here and it ends right about there. So we don't see it up here because the blanket is covering it, but we do see it right here. And there's that line and then there's one more line right there. Cool, so now we've got this back chair almost done. The only thing that's missing of that is this little corner right here above the blanket. So I'm gonna do that right now. I noticed that um, it's coming out about like this and then it comes down like that. But this line actually carries through those back uh, rungs of the back of the chair. So there we go, we've got that. Now we can uh, add our bottom of our blanket. And make sure that you're careful to uh, create the variations of the curvature of your drapery study. So do you see how it goes up and then it comes back and goes around? Look for those little subtleties that are going to help it to read properly. Now for our bowl, I have to put in an ellipse. So an ellipse is an oval. It's not a perfect circle, perfectly round circle, I should say. And then there's a smaller ellipse down here that we only see a part of because that's the inside of the bowl and the bottom of the bowl. And then the bowl has sides that are flat. And then we curve those and connect them. So there's our bowl. Then we can have our lower leg from the chair that's laying on the ground coming from behind that bowl. There we go. And we've got a couple lines from the bowl going to this leg over here. And this is just a piece of wood that's underneath the seat of the chair. All right, look at that. It's looking good, people. It's looking good. All right, now we have to bring uh, this top edge down. Looking for the cord. Comes to about there. And this line goes to about there. That's that leg curving into the back of the chair. And then we have this edge coming all the way down. And now we have our lamp. We only see a part of the top of the lamp. The lamp is on an angle, it's like this. This part of the lampshade is behind the edge of the chair and then it reveals itself right about there. And then we have the bottom of our lampshade. There we go. Now the uh, lamp base comes down and it's rounded at the bottom. And then it has this cool edge like that, but then it has these little lines uh, that divide that shape. And then what's left is the 
back of the chair, the finishing touches. All right, there's that. And that. All right, so we, uh, I think I'm just looking over the whole thing to see if there's anything that I missed. And I think for the most part, we got it all in there. So now what I wanna do is I want to bring this camera closer just so you can see, here's our photo. Okay, there's the edge of that back of the chair with the lamp. There's the cord, uh, the bowl, the blanket, the other chair that's tilted. And now when we come back in here, you can see how I included all of those things in there. All right. Um, but allowing your picture plane to really help you to set this up properly. So in other words, when I'm looking at the original photo here, you know, I'm, I'm concerned, you know, that uh, how the edge of this picture uh, is in reference to the object itself is gonna happen in my drawing. So you wanna make sure that your spatial relationships, your negative spaces, like this is a big negative space, negative space. You wanna make sure that those negative spaces match up in your original along with the positive uh, spaces, which are the objects, okay? And then the spaces between the objects are important. And then last but not least, our angles. So you're really comparing angles. Remember what I did here when I was first putting this line and I said, oh, we're coming down about one fourth. Well, let's check. So before I did it, I used my fingers to double check and make sure that that was one fourth. Same over here. And that's a good thing to do more often. I just did it in the beginning. But if I didn't have, um, if I didn't have many of these under my belt and I was trying to, or even if I was just doing this on my own, not as a demo and I had longer, I would be checking more of those spatial relationships in that manner, you know, where I'd be comparing uh, with my fingers or my pencil. Um, so uh, it's fun to watch me do this and for you guys to see uh, a demo that shows an example but also you wanna know that there are some things that you're gonna do that I wasn't necessarily doing as much because you have longer to do it, okay? So I'm gonna stop the recording. Uh, here we go.